very happy to introduce Angelique Bozio, who produced a documentary about, I guess, one of the most famous underground queer filmmakers uh, in yeah. the world, Bruce LaBruz. And um, first I must say that I find the, the title very glamorous, it's great. How, <laughs> how did you... How did you get to it? The, the, the title? Yeah. Uh, it came from a letter. I was already, I had already started filming it and I was reading this letter from Kurt Cobain mm -hmm. from the end of year 93. Mm -hmm. And he was writing to, he had been interviewed by The Advocate mm -hmm. and he was writing this letter to The Advocate, I think. And he said, I would always be an advocate for fagdom. And later he was talking about Bruce's films that were the most hilarious erotic films he had ever seen. So I just took the, the advocate for Fagdom quote, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which was not about Bruce directly, but since the letter talked about him as well, I, I stole the title. Okay. okay, it's great. It sounds really, really great. But then I was thinking, I, I really love the documentary, but why, why did you want to do a documentary about Bruce LaBruce? Because I felt that I wasn't sure if it's if it if it fits his style or like his image, you know, like doing a documentary about Bruce La Bruce. Oh. Is that that sounds very conventional and conservative? I don't think that the that the documentary is conservative, yeah, but but, but it's like, why do you want to do that about mm -hmm. Bruce La Bruce? He's so extreme and out of any category and convention. Yeah. You you would think. I think the movie also shows that he's not sometimes, but. Uh, how, why did you do this documentary? What for? Um, well, first, Bruce said once that it was strange that he had a documentary about him in the middle of his career. Yes, you know, it is really weird. So that's true, but uh, I can't wait for him to die to do something about him. That's <laughs> impossible, really. That's depressing. So, yeah. no, but uh, why I wanted to make documentaries, uh, I want to be able to talk about people that are creating art right now mm -hmm. and that may be not mainstream enough for the most people to know them and I think a certain form of documentary that seem rather classical or as you say we probably make more documentaries about something that's ended already mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so maybe it will bring more people that would not know about Bruce La Bruce in another way to know his work. I think the form, the very classical form, simple, mm -hmm. uh, because my documentary is, it's not an experimental documentary. Mm -hmm. I think it, will be, it could bring more people to gain some interest in his work. Mm -hmm. how, did you, how did you um, come across Bruce La Bruce? How did, how did you meet him and his work in a way? Uh, I met him for my first documentary. I wanted to interview him. Mm -hmm. And uh, I met him in Berlin, something like nine years ago. Mm -hmm. And he was really, he was kind enough to welcome us on the set of his film, Raspberry Reich, at the time, with Susanna Zaxer. Mm -hmm. So I interviewed him at Jürgen Brüning's office, and then we went, we spent the night with them uh, on, the, on the shoot. So, mm -hmm. and th that was, I don't know if you saw Raspberry Reich, but I think you have. Watched it yet. I haven't watched it yet, it's really horrible, but I haven't, yeah. I haven't <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I can I can sell you the film. Please, if you want. Oh, yeah, there's the business oh, yeah. coming through. It's a it's a very funny live a scene in a lift where the couple has sex in a lift, and so we spend the night, you know, uh, with the with the light uh, turning off, and oh no, my God, the, the shot is is ruined because the light, you know, came yeah. off, and the lift going up and down like that, and spend the night doing this. Okay. Just filming, <laughs> filming sex in a lift that wasn't really working. <laughs> All night. Yeah. Okay. Hardly, yeah. This must have been exhausting for the, the poor actors to yeah. be like on night. I think that was shooting. pretty exhausting yeah. for them, but yeah. How um, did you actually first meet his artwork though? Oh, I can't really okay. remember. I think the first film I saw was Super 8 and a Half or Ursula White years ago. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe when I was working on my first documentary and I was searching for uh, the name of Bruce Bruce was familiar. I think I had seen Super 8 and a half at one point. I can't remember exactly well, uh, when. And uh, so I knew his films mm -hmm. and I really loved Super 8 and a half. And, and then I watched the other ones. And, but what I didn't know before I really started the documentary was all his involvement with Glenn Bel Belverio and Glenda and Friends, the TV show in the 90s and how much he was some kind of a fantastic activist, uh, really unique, in a really unique way. And that fascinates me. I think, I really also think that this, this unique way is very fascinating. And I was wondering, 
where it comes from because I kind of believe you can always explain why people go into certain directions and I guess if you uh, look at his childhood and, his, and at his upbringing growing up in a very rural yeah. kind of landscape area of Canada being absolutely isolated and not having the possibility of developing his own sexuality in a way I was wondering if this is very much a crucial part of his later identity and of the way he chose to go I think it's always part of mm -hmm. that but I think it's really difficult to mm -hmm. dig a, to dig in that and to find the very pure sheer yeah. reasons I mean there are many things there are encounters there mm -hmm. are opportunities there are mistakes mm -hmm. that make you what you are mm -hmm. so I think of course where he was brought up has a great importance in what he 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 is and uh, Gerson Sen told me about a picture that I couldn't use because there are many family members of Bruce and it's a picture with his huge family like uncle, aunts, cousins, brothers and sisters and parents of course and Gus, was Gus Van Sen was describing it as a very you know uh, ordinary farmer uh, from Canada really all dressed the same kind of retro thing and there was one guy that was standing out you know, with his style and the way he was dressed and his hair and that was Bruce and that he was really standing out of it. So I think, I think it's a question of nature as well that even very young in his family he had already that thing going on. But That's beautiful though, know. it's beautiful, it's calming me <laughs> down in a way that it's, that it's the nature that does it. And, yeah. um, but what other crucial parts in his biography maybe have led, or what did you find out during your research have led a little bit his way? Um, I don't know. So, uh, I have, yeah, it's difficult for me because I, I took him as he is and I never tried to find so, out yeah. why as if it wasn't normal. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. mean, it's like what John Waters said, uh, I never questioned his name, it's Bruce LaBruce, you mm -hmm. know, and his parents are Mr. and Mrs. LaBruce and mm -hmm. Dot. And so I think I always yeah, I think that's him. I never question like, oh my God, what happened in his childhood? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, like to me, it's it's it would be like saying, oh, you're queer. Then what happened in your childhood? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah. So maybe I'm a very bad journalist, uh, yeah. or I wonder the wrong question, you know. But I really took him as he is. Yeah, I, I guess just sometimes for me it's interesting. I, I totally agree on the point that you don't have to, you know, dig deep, and and that's impossible probably also. But sometimes they're just like crucial experiences yeah. or encounters, as you said, that really, you know, transform or change people and make them, you know, to um, who they are. But I think that the fact that he was very young in the eighties and during uh, the presidency of Reagan, because at that time he was. Uh, living a lot in America and in New York and uh, I think the fact that he saw, he actually saw that nothing was done about AIDS because mm -hmm. he's, he's been talking about it a lot when I met him nine years ago and again when we were shooting this documentary so I think that was a really important point in his life I think he must have seen friends die mm -hmm. out of it and things like that and so I think it's a fundamental thing about him, but it's true that I don't go really deep in his mind and childhood and stuff like that. Maybe, maybe it's a mistake and maybe I, I missed something there, but... Well, I, th I think there's a lot of other interesting stuff. I mean, you, you cannot cover everything and I think there's so yeah. many... Also, the way that you chose uh, a lot of his friends and people that influenced him. You, you already mentioned Gus Van Sand and uh, um, John Waters. Um, and what do you think, what kind of quality do they add to the movie with their statements and their comments about him? Oh, well, then first I would talk about Harmony Corrine, I think. <laughs> because when I saw that interview and the way he had dressed up and how he was talking about Bruce, I said, oh, great, we're having a completely non-interview there <laughs> and you know he talks about homo core people as uh, really angry homosexuals and homosexuals that like to carry knives and you're <laughs> like what the hell and I think he has the same kind of humor that Bruce yeah. can have yeah. and this character that he builds for himself uh, as Bruce does so for, for, for instance Harmony Corrine is someone that will add some humor 
and uh, that is someone that is not afraid of words. So he's going to say fag when he wants to say fag, and he's going to say really horrible things when he wants to. He's going to build up stories that are completely wrong, but that, you know, there's always an inch of truth about mm -hmm. it. So, for example, uh, Harmony Corinne brings that humor that Bruce has to, mm -hmm. but in another way. And John Waters, well, I think they're very similar in, uh, in terms of work in terms of how to have fun, to make fun of representations of transsexuals, of men and women, and uh, sexual habits. And yeah, yeah. So I think all these people have, uh, f to start with, have a real intimacy with Bruce, friendship, relationship. Then they all share something with him. And they, for me, it's a way to show other aspects of Bruce without using Bruce always. Mm -hmm. but letting other people express themselves and mm -hmm. seeing that he's not i mean that he's not just working for himself that there are people that are sharing his identity his thoughts his work mm -hmm. the, big the big contradiction the big contradiction of him being married and uh, at the same time a strong opposer of heteronormativity oh. um, yeah, and I think that you were really well in, uh, in <laughs> portraying. I think I know what you mean. <laughs> portraying this, uh, yes. Oh, yeah. Did you, did, did you intend this? <laughs> this did is I really intend professional. That? Right? Yeah, this, did... we are very professional. Are you kidding? So, um, uh, yes, actually, no. I was obsessed with one sentence when I was editing, mm -hmm. and it was a, sent a quote from Ernest Hardy who was saying that he loved the contradictions about Bruce mm -hmm. and the fact that he had to find a way to balance his politics in real life and that was life was all about and art was all about. That seems really naive, but I really like this thing because at one point you feel kind of free to say, yeah, I, I'm going to fight for the rights of blah, 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 but then something happens in your life and that touches you directly, you know, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. places you wouldn't have imagined before and you're ready to do something and you're not denying yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think you can defend or fight against ideas and find the complexity of life and find that the complexity of life and people can allow you to do something really similar. But mm -hmm. uh, I like that freedom. Yeah, I really like that. I, I, I want to be able to, con to contradict myself and not to say, oh, I'm a very nice girl and, mm -hmm. you know, I, and I won't be able to be a mean girl in, mm -hmm. <laughs> in another situation. That's a shitty example, but no, no, I, 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 I like the fact that you can fail. I like the fact that you can fall. I like the fact that you can really do something that is against everything that you've ever believed in mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah.